Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on The Flash Season 7. Today we're going to be doing my review slash breakdown for episode 15. We need to freak out about this episode because so much happened, they set up so much. There is lots of twists, lots of turns, and they've set up a lot of mystery. And I can't wait to go ahead and get into this in this review slash breakdown. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into this. So the start of the episode starts off with a bang and a complete surprise. Well, Nora shows up out of nowhere and you're like, what the hell, Nora's showing up already? Like, yeah, we knew she was going to show up in the second to last episode of the season, but showing up now? So I think what happened is this is new footage they actually shot when Jessica Parker Kennedy came into town like a couple weeks later. And they filmed the scene for this episode and so what happened was basically she showed up and they had their reunion and it was just little and they do hug and you know they talk for like a tiny wincy bit and it was basically a kind of dream that Barry had that he interprets in a way that Iris is pregnant and then he goes on to say I think we are pregnant and so obviously that's super exciting, I can't wait to see this, and Barry is so convinced throughout this whole episode that it's going to be Nora because Nora appeared in his dream, and obviously she's been set up for the future, and we know that an iteration of her is going to exist, however, this whole episode I'm like, Barry, you know there's still a chance because this is like timeline stuff, you know, this is time travel, this is the Flash after all that you could be having a boy but it turns out the whole time that he's trying to test out and do everything it was false and he's a bit confused about what's going on but we'll get into that later in the video so yeah at that point barry wakes up from the dream and then he calls iris and then you have this really funny scene with cecile she walks into the lab and barry has this great scene where he's coming up with excuses obviously this happened a bit last episode and the episode before where they've been sort of scooting around because they don't want to reveal all this big stuff including obviously pregnancy to the rest of the team just yet because they're not quite ready throughout this whole episode Iris is not seen Iris is supposedly sick obviously this just means that Candace wasn't around to shoot this episode I think she did have like a mini break and that's why he didn't see her in the last episode either so I guess it was like a month long break like that's pretty long but anyway so that's why she wasn't there if you guys were wondering but in this scene, I really love Grant, and like, I get reminded every week, you know, I love Grant, and you know, having him barely in last week's episode was a huge detriment to the episode, because when you just see him in like this one scene, right, you're like, he has so much charm, and I would watch anything with him, because he's just that good, right? And then throughout this whole episode, it's so flash heavy. That is fantastic, and I really, really, really loved this episode. I had a blast, and there was so much going on, but mainly it was great to have the Flash and Barry properly, like, featured in the episode. So, it's revealed that Killer Frost is going to watch Chillblains every step. She's basically very angry, she's doing angry painting, and Chester references Chillblain in the newspaper, and he's like, oh, he's like the new Captain Cold because he is now supposedly reformed. So he actually does show up later in the episode and we'll get back to that in just a minute. But setting up what happens by the end of the episode, we have Joe and Kramer and their storyline. So we have kind of four main storylines going on. You have Chillblane and Frost, you have Joe and Kramer, you have The Flash and Chester and Godspeed. And then you have Caitlin, Allegra, Cecile, and Ultraviolet with their storyline. But Joe and Kramer talk about how she survived the Claymore attack. She's a bit confused. She's never properly thought about it. But Joe is thinking about her past in a way that she's never thought about. And this obviously leads into them showing up later in the episode in the car where the car explodes. Now, this was the final scene. And we're going to get into this right now because why not, right? This was like what the hell like we know something was going to happen because they were just idly waiting in the car but it seems like Kramer's friend set them up blew up the car and the main question is are they both dead I would say it's very very likely that they're both not dead and that they somehow got out the car and they just didn't show us however there is a chance and they made it look like Joe and Kramer just died and that would be huge for the Flash if they 
actually went through with that. However, I don't think they're ever going to go through with that. So I think they're going to be all right and it's going to be revealed next episode. But wow, what an ending. Okay, let's move back to the Godspeed stuff and let's properly get into this because we have so much to talk about in regards to Godspeed. So the Godspeeds show up in Central City. You see two at first, they look at each other and Barry comes to Star Labs to try and do his urine test. However, that's when the windows start shattering in. Cecile reads Barry's motion. She's like, oh, I know what's going on here. Barry is testing to see if Iris is pregnant, but then they get cut off. And then that's where that storyline kind of stops for now. And it picks up back later with them two getting ready to have lunch again. Okay, so yeah, the Godspeeds, it's awesome. I love them. And so they show back up and you have the two of them at the start and they're in two places at once. Barry realizes that the Godspeeds are the ones causing the chaos and that they're in multiple places at once. Obviously, they've tackled many clones before. I'm not sure if there's been like more than one at a time. However, they keep on coming consecutively. It's been a while since the last one. However, now they are back. We're gonna continue with this in just a second, but we need to acknowledge the Ultraviolet storyline. So we kind of skip back to the last episode, which is weird because you have the Godspeed storyline going on, but then you kind of cut back to the characters that you saw in last week's episode. So I wouldn't be surprised if they filmed this like all in one go with last week's episode. So out of nowhere, Ultraviolet is back. She's still in Star Labs and Ultraviolet turns out doesn't trust Caitlyn. Allegra just isn't that much of an interesting character and her cousin isn't interesting really at all. And this was like the biggest detriment to this episode because this is jumping back to stuff that is very non-interesting compared to, you know, the Godspeed storyline that's all going on, you know, the civil war that's breaking out that is super interesting and mysterious and you also have Barry with, you know, the potential of Nora coming. It's all really, really great. But then you have this kind of ultraviolet storyline where you're like, okay, so sure, we're going to continue this, but why are we actually including this? That is a question that I think a lot of you guys will probably asking yourself when watching this episode. However, the storyline is made better by the stakes going on by the Godspeeds outside. Because with this all going on, it gives it a new sense of urgency and it's a little bit better. So it is a bit elevated than, say, just like last episode or something. But anyway, okay, so Chillblain is in this episode. He reunites with Frost. Frost saves him at the bar. And then he offers to help take down the Godspeeds. He knows a little bit about this. He's obviously a very smart guy. And so he goes and they meet at Star Labs. And this is where they get trapped and they have to take down some of the Godspeeds. Okay, so Chester finds out a way to translate the Godspeeds kind of shrieking that keeps them going on. Obviously, it is some sort of language, just like an animal would talk, but in a way that humans can't understand. So he's managed to translate it, and so he realizes that it's a trap, and Barry's putting that trap inside that room, and then six Godspeeds come in out of nowhere, and you're left like, what the hell was going on? There are six Godspeeds circling around Barry, and at this point, Barry knows he is screwed, he needs to get out of there, so he runs through Central City towards Star Labs, and at this point, Chester initiates a force field that stops any speedster so Barry just about gets in and so the Godspeeds are trying to break in and they are punching their way in and this is what is happening for like a whole segment of the episode where they're just trying to break in and they're using every force that they can to break in. The punching doesn't work for a while however they find a new way to break in as they begin draining the energy from the force field obviously in a similar way to how they drain Barry's speed later in the episode and they have in the past. So that's the whole thing, like Barry does get his speed drain, but like barely anything because it's only for a short period of time before something crazy happens, which we'll get to in just a moment. But anyway, so Barry talks to Iris on the phone. This is a thing throughout this episode to acknowledge Iris, even though Iris isn't there. And so he kind of does his final call, you know, just in case anything bad happens with the Godspeeds. But he's very happy that she isn't here because... He definitely thinks she's pregnant at this point. Okay, so Chester stumbles in and finds out that they're having a child. Barry's like, oh, we didn't mean for that to come out. However, I mean, it's pretty obvious by the way that Barry's acting. So yeah, it turns out, but Chester's like, hush, hush. Like, I'm going to stay quiet. 
Okay, so Barry's sure that it's a girl, but Chester explains to him very smartly that with the time travel included with how Barry met Nora before and with her being erased, it's very possible that it may not be what Barry and Iris expect. It may not be Nora, it might be someone else. And this is obviously teasing Bar Talon's arrival because, you know, they're going to have a boy and a girl. So maybe they are twins. We'll have to wait and see. But anyway, so Chester goes into the time vault, and so apparently it's been turned into a speeds to panic room. However, one of the Godspeeds is able to break in because he's that powerful, or at least like just this one clone is. So imagine how powerful the real Godspeed is if he's able to break through a place like this. Okay, so Caitlyn still operates on ultraviolet. Cecile holds her hand and somehow helps her. And again, in my notes, I was like, why is this happening? But still, anyway, let's move on from that. Godspeed begins draining the energy from the force field, like I said. And then you have this awesome fight that breaks out with Godspeed versus the Flash. Barry beats the hell out of Godspeed, and it's so cool with the music and all the slow motion. I really like that scene where Barry's just like consistently punching Godspeed, and their lightning is going off everywhere, and it looks really cool. And so Gideon returns as she helps Chester. I kind of theorized that maybe Gideon will return at some point in this episode, and that turned out to be true. And so Gideon plays the Godspeed voices, the sort of shrieking, throughout Star Labs, and it disorientates all the Godspeeds, and our team is able to get the upper hand for a little bit. And so I have to mention when Godspeed was fighting Chillblain and Frost, it was a little bit weird that they were only having a fist fight and they weren't trying to use their powers. I get it that the sounds were probably disrupting their powers in some way and their concentration, but it was a bit weird seeing them just going in for a fist fight and then right after the sort of sounds stop, they go in for the hand phasing and obviously that's back to normal and that was great. However, I just wanted to point out it was a little bit weird that they were just, you know, trying to punch each other rather than like speeds to fight and beat the hell out of Chillblain and Frost. Obviously, this is just a way to show that Frost and Chillblain are like a pretty good team and they can take on powerful people. But at that point, they get zapped when the sound stops and Chester gets trapped by that Godspeed who breaks in and you're like, what the hell is happening? Are they all going to get killed? And it's at that point where Barry screams and he's like, follow me. You know, obviously he didn't exactly say that, but the Godspeeds chase him throughout Central City. They start draining his speed as he's on the ground. So six Godspeeds get the upper hand on him. And then completely out of nowhere, you get this shot and you see in the distance six new Godspeeds. So there's 12 Godspeeds in total. So it's two teams and they start fighting each other. They fight each other like they go ham. And you're sitting there like, what the hell is happening? There is literal Godspeeds fighting each other. And like, why on earth are they actually doing this? And so I have a theory. So my theory is this. So there's obviously two teams, right? And the Godspeeds are battling to try and get infinite velocity. So you have those two teams. So are there two main Godspeeds? That is a big question. And maybe I can make another video on this and go into more detail sometime this week. However, they're both fighting for infinite velocity and using similar clones. So what happens if there isn't just one main Godspeed? Because with this twist, with there being two teams, so 12 Godspeeds in total, that means that the Godspeed war is being operated by two different sides. That means two different people are in charge for sure. So what the hell just happened? And Team Flash acknowledged this and they're like, it's a civil war we've just run into it. and Team Flash is in the middle of it. So it's a crazy and unexpected twist to find out that the Godspeeds aren't all aligned because we kind of just assumed, just like Team Flash assumed, we thought they were all working together, but no, there are 12 Godspeed clones and there are two teams and they fight each other and it was awesome. Okay, so let's talk about what else is happening by the end of the episode. So Allegra calls Chester Chuck again, you get the kind of resolution of the Ultraviolet storyline. Just for now, obviously, she's going to appear again, once again, need to reiterate, I have no idea why the Ultraviolet storyline is going on, like it's not very interesting at all, and it kind of weighed down this episode from being like a 10 out of 10, I would say this episode is like a 9 out of 10, I had a fantastic time, apart from those Ultraviolet scenes, although they weren't like the worst things in the world, 
However, it kind of takes you out of it for like a little bit from the rest of the action-packed episode. But okay, Barry goes back to his lab and he tests the pea sample and it turns out to be red, meaning negative. And so Barry loses faith in the future, it seems, because he thought that, you know, the message he got from Nora at the start of the episode was that they would be having their child like ASAP, like right now, pretty soon. But then Cecile's there to comfort him and be like, no, it's fine, don't worry about it. And so I'm interested to see where Barry goes from here. So the final scene of the episode, as we previously discussed, Joe and Kramer supposedly die in a car explosion. So what do you guys think about all of this? This was a crazy episode, so much went down. Obviously this is a bit of a longer review, but hopefully you enjoyed it because we went through absolutely everything kind of freaked out about some of this and theorized a little bit about what's actually happening with the two sides of Godspeed. And we'll be sure to make extra videos on this over the next couple of days. Obviously, we need to break down the trailer for next week. Digger was showing up to try and take down Godspeed as well. But that's about it for this video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment. Subscribe and turn on notifications if you're new. You can click on the top right corner of the screen to watch my latest video. But for now, I'll catch you guys later. Watch out for my Flash trailer breakdown later today. And I'll see you guys then. So, goodbye. I see.